Hi guys, just wanted to say thank you for hanging on whilst I was on my creative sabbatical. Really hope you enjoy this next tutorial for the Silky Hair Streak Butterfly. For this butterfly, gather a load of browns, a red, black, orange, white and yellow. The browns can be your scrap clay, they are my scrap clay. Uh, and we're going to layer them, just make sure that they look a little different from each other so that you get some contrast in your cane. So then we're going to put them through the pasta machine on the thicker setting and we're going to cut them out into little rectangles that we're going to stack later. Now this is for the fuzzy, furry, hairy bit on the bottom wing. Um, I don't know what to call it. Anyway, we're going to make that. Uh, so to get that effect we're going to layer these squares of brown. It doesn't need to be a lot of clay here, uh, I overestimated the amount that I used, um, so just use however much you think is right. Once you've cut all the pieces then you want to stack them and stack them in a random order and slightly off center. This will just create a more uh, random kind of looking cane because we're trying to imitate fur which is quite difficult to imitate because obviously fur goes this way and that, it doesn't go in straight lines as such. So we're just layering the clay to try and imitate a little bit of, a little bit of fuzz if you like. Once you've stacked the colours you just want to squidge it together, trim off one side and just push those slices together. At this point it doesn't have to be particularly neat uh, but just make sure that all the pieces are stuck together and then you can start to reduce it a little bit so that you get the length in the cane that we're going to use later. times its um, original length you can cut it into three and then you can stack it. Now I chose to only use two pieces because I used a lot of brown clay right at the beginning and uh, didn't find it necessary really to add that last piece but you can just sort of play with what looks good for you. If you've made a smaller um, stack of brown than I have then perhaps you will need all three pieces but it's up to you. We're gonna try and use all the scraps that we create in this cane anyway, so don't be too afraid of scrapping some. Next take that cane that you've just made and insert some small uh, squares of black. You can do this obviously at the prior stage but I wanted the black to be a little more prominent in the cane than the brown so I cut into the brown and I'm just layering black in between them. At relatively regular intervals. It just creates a nice contrast. On a side note you can use your brown scrap to mix with some black and make a really nice rich dark brown which we'll be using later um, as part of the main wing. Okay so take the fuzzy hairy furry whatever cane and just give it a good smoosh. You want to shape it so that it is sort of a triangle with soft edges um, and make it so that it's about the height of the cane. On a side note, we really need to figure out a name for it. So next we're going to deal with the main feature, that's the beautiful orange flashes. So roll out your yellow, your orange and your red on your thickest pasta machine setting. Then we're going to dive in and cut the orange. So I cut the orange into a long rectangular shape. Then I cut it into two and I used a flexible blade to create a curved line in one piece. I stuck that curved piece next to the square and decided I wanted a deeper cut into the orange. I then nicked off a little corner for the red. Uh, don't underestimate the amount of red 
when you're putting red into a Skinner blend. Honestly, it will change the color so quickly. A little bit goes a long way, trust me. And you can always change it later on. You can always add more color. You can never take it away, so just be wary of that. So I'm layering up the orange here so that we get two um, layers of the color because I want quite a lot of the Skinner blend. So I'm making sure that we've got two layers probably worth noting at this point that if you have some spare orange clay that's going to help you um, so try and keep a little bit back at this point honestly I know this little bit of red on the corner looks pitiful but it does actually red is such a strong color that it can really change orange so I always err on the side of caution and um, add the smallest amount of red I possibly can and then I'll add more later and I'll show you how to do so once you've got all your lovely pieces, push them all together, like knit the bits together so that they don't come apart by pushing with your forefingers along the seams. Um, and then you'll be running it through the pasta machine on the thicker setting first and then folding from top to bottom. So you always want the orange down one side, that's what I'm pointing at, and the yellow down the other side. And again, you just want to keep folding it the same way. And here I will show you how the colours start to bleed through. You can see there that the orange has started to come through into the yellow, so I'm folding it again and putting it through the pasta machine. And this is the whole point of the Skinner Blend. It creates a gradient from the darker colour to a lighter colour, or between colours. You can make a beautiful rainbow gradient, um, if you so wish. So can you see here that orange isn't quite as contrasting to the other part of orange as I would like, so I'm just adding a little bit of red, like little spots of red just to create a little bit more contrast in that top part. We're going to be using this blend for both the bottom and the top wing so I kind of just want to make sure the blend is what I want. As you can see here the top part is now a better contrast which is what I'm looking for so I just neaten up the gradient and then we're going to fold it so that we have a sort of um, a regular kind of tape which has the same length all the way down. Then we're going to put that through the pasta machine on the thicker setting and then gradually decrease the setting so you get a long thin tape. I tend to cut it in two because I find it unwieldy otherwise. I usually cut this into three centimetre um, sections you can cut it into whatever size you want I'd recommend two to three to four centimeters really and then we're gonna stack them on top of each other if you do any less than two centimeters I find that it gets really difficult to shape so I would probably cut it at three I'm just using my uh, flexible blade underneath the clay to lift it from the glass uh, mat that I work on because it can stick now we need a bit of darker orange to finish off the blend so I've just added to any remaining orange I had a little bit more red and you can see I'm adding really tiny spots really. I'm going to run it through the pasta machine a few times and then I'll decide if that's too dark, too light and I will carry on. One thing to note when you are mixing colours is white and black will to an extent light and dark but they'll also take away from the hue so you'll end up with something that looks washed out whereas if you add colours that are similar that are slightly darker or richer like a red to an orange it will make a darker orange so this lovely juicy hue that I've just mixed we're just gonna stick it on the bottom of the stack uh, just to increase the amount of orange there is in there and then we're going to pat it down, squeeze it down, make sure all the air is out and cut it in two so that we have the paler section which is going to be the top, in the top part of the wing and the darker section which will be in the bottom part of the wing. So the top section has a sort of, it's kind of a teardrop but but sort of a long teardrop so you haven't got that sort of circular shape at the top is sort of elongated um, and it's a little bit messy so what I'm trying to do here is try and recreate that shape um, and then we kind of want to size up all the elements now this is quite difficult when you have multiple elements in a butterfly wing but 
I find that perhaps if you make the top wing and then you make the bottom wing that can make it a little bit easier but I'm trying to shape here so that I kind of get an idea of where things are on the wing because I need the orange splots to sort of flow from top to bottom as in from the top wing to the bottom wing. So here I rolled out that really dark brown that I told you to mix earlier. I mixed a lot whilst I was making this to be fair. Um, and that's going to form the majority of the rest of the wing. So that will be the tip of the wing, that will be the edge of the wing. So for the top wing you want to make yourself sort of a, a triangle shape where obviously the tip of the triangle is going to go toward the body and the rounder bit is going to go toward the outer wing. And then we're going to try and fit it to this lovely orange yellow shape that we've made. We want to make it irregular, so I'm using my needle tool here and also my exact, the rolling handle on my X-Acto knife to sort of make those curves so that the lines aren't exactly straight. I don't like straight lines on a butterfly. Occasionally a vein is fine, but not often. Curved or irregular is better. Um, what I did want to do though, rather than having a straight line there, is make the illusion of the brown bleeding into the yellow and orange. So I'm making these grooves with my needle tool, which we're then gonna fill with very small sausages of brown. And then when we stick the yellow orange part back to that big brown part, and when we've reduced it, it will look like that brown is actually bleeding into the orange yellow bit. And it's not just a piece of clay that we've stuck in. Whilst I have this yellow bit, you'll also notice there is a spot right in that in that top bit so I've just made a small incision with my X-Acto knife made the area round with my needle tool and then I'm just using a little bit of brown clay to fill in the gaps So we're going to put some more small sausages of brown in the other side. Again we want the brown to almost look like it's bleeding into that colour. But we are going to build up the rest of the wing from this angle as well using the sausage technique um, or the snake technique, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you're going to roll out some dark brown into thicker snakes because there's quite a lot of wing to make here and just uh, pop it on the edge of the orange. Now have a look at the reference here because the proportion is that the back end of the wing is actually larger, has, has more brown in it than the bit on the inner wing. So try and build it up and adjust as necessary. Uh, I tend to sort of start with a shape that I like and then I'll look at the reference and adjust where I need to. You can always cut bits off, that's absolutely fine, as long as you're maintaining the shape of the wing that you are trying to make. Once you're happy with all the brown, you can go ahead and draw on the veins using a blunt tool. Um, I then mixed the scraps of yellow and orange with a little bit more yellow, popped it through the pasta machine on a three setting and that was my vein colour. I cut through the entire wing with a flexible blade. As you can see, I always keep the pieces um, where they're going to end up in the end because my memory is awful. And then we're going to cut through the yellow and just put it on the wing. Now you want to make sure that you are using your X-Acto knife to cut where the, uh, where, the, where the black is, where the brown is. You don't want any of the yellow vein on the brown. Um, and just gently, gently place the pieces together so that you can pull them apart once you've done this part. You can obviously put in the rest of the vein now if you wish at the same time and I do that with the bottom wing because I found it was an easier way of doing it. But whilst I was doing this one I hadn't really decided to put in the rest of the vein just yet. I wasn't sure how it was going to look so I decided late to put in black for the rest of the vein and it did come out really nicely. Okay, so now I've made the decision to put the black parts into the wing. So I've gently just pulled apart my 
wing and I'm just going to put some black in. Again on a 3 setting I'm just going to gently insert it into the places where there is no yellow so that's every part that's got a brown part of the wing. And just using your X-Acto knife, um, just be very careful when you put the wing back together. Really line up the yellow um, or the orange section because otherwise your veins are going to look a little, little iffy. Um, you don't want it to look too iffy. Once you're happy with the wings, just give it a good squidge together and then roll out some more black on a slightly thicker setting, so I used a 2 setting for this, and just wrap your um, entire wing in the black. I ran out of black here which is why I've sort of done 3 quarters of the wing and then I'm going to go back and just fill in the rest. I always find wrapping the entire wing gives it a really neat finish. It just looks nice. Next we're going to mix um, a sort of a pale grey, so grab some whites and black, give it a good mix and then we're going to wrap the wing only about two thirds, half, in, um, in grey. It's the bottom edge and the outer wing effectively. And that's the top wing done, so grab the other elements that we did earlier. That's the fuzzy bit and the orange section. At this point I decided that the elements I made were too big in comparison to the top wing. So I did some trimming, I did some reshaping and that's absolutely fine. The most important thing with a butterfly cane is not necessarily the colour. Like you could make a monarch cane and you could make it blue and green if you wanted to but the way that it's recognisable is in the shape of the element so it's got a monarch has those beautiful sections in the top wing that are very outlined in very thick black and it's got those lovely white dots down the side um, there are similar butterflies like a viceroy is very similar but the monarch is more distinctive because the, col the, the sections of colour are bigger so you really need to make the sections of colour the size and shape of the butterfly, regardless of what colour they are really. So again, I'm happy with the orange shape that I've finally got it into, so I'm making it look like the brown is bleeding into the orange by using the needle tool to create some grooves and then putting in some very small snakes of brown. I'm then going to push it onto the fuzzy bit, I don't know what we're calling it, let's just call it the fuzzy bit. And, um, and then squish it down so that we haven't got any air bubbles. You can see that the orange section sort of loops under the fuzzy bit a little bit so make sure you have that because that's the edge of the wing effectively. There's also some brown spots in the orange bit in the bottom of it so make sure that you are sticking some sausages of brown in there. I use my noodle tool, I use my exacto knife to create an incision first on some of them um, and then stick them in but again you want variations so there'll be a small one and a couple of really big ones um, so make sure you're getting that kind of variation. So to prove to you guys that I get it wrong too, I didn't like the shape of the orange here when I compared it to my reference. So I took some orange that we'd made earlier and just added it onto the cane. It doesn't matter so much because the gradient cane isn't as uh, contrasting, it's not different colours, it is basically just dark orange to a light orange so you can add those extra bits on. And then I want to make it look like it's bleeding into the next bit of brown. So again, I'm making grooves with my needle tool and then I'm just going to make some small sausages to fill in the gaps. And then we come to, that's right, you guessed it, the sausage technique. Once again, we're using this to build up the wing. I'm using quite fat sausages because I don't have time to waste here. I've got more butterflies to make. So I'm just gonna stick them on, try and get the shape that I want, and then really squidge it down. 
Then it's time to add some veins to this one as well. Now I found these ones quite difficult to cut because they're sort of a circular one in the middle. So I used my X-Acto knife in the end, using it sort of vertically. The blade is about as deep as my cane is, so I was able to cut all the way through. You can do this if you have a relelatively short cane. I mean, mine are about 2.5 centimeters long. It can be a little bit tricky. If you can't, if you can only use a straight blade, that's absolutely fine. You can shape the pieces afterward. Don't think that um, that's going to be a problem. So grab that remaining yellow that you use for the top wing veins and then stick that to the orange bits. Roll out some black on a thin setting, same as your yellow setting, and then stick that to the brown bits. And then piece the wing together as best you can. Try and take some time to line up that orange again because you don't want it looking wiggly. You just want you want it to match. If you did make it slightly different then that's okay because it doesn't have to be perfect but it does look a little better if it if the block looks like it was put in as a block. So, did I mention earlier that I have the memory of a fish? No? Well, I do. In fact, that's probably being generous. Fish have a much better memory than I do. <laughs> Trust me. So, I completely forgot how this piece stuck on. I really did, and I couldn't figure it out. So what I did instead was I put it where I thought it should go and then took a little piece out of the brown section of cane to make it fit. Uh, it wasn't the most elegant of ways of doing it, but it does show you that my planning doesn't always work, uh, neither does my brain, and um, there are always ways around it. So if you mess up, don't worry about it, it's not a big deal, you can usually fix it. Stick with me guys, we're almost there. Roll out some black on A3 setting and wrap the entire bottom cane in the black. This will give it a really nice line. And then we're going to do exactly the same as what we did with the top wing and we are going to also add a layer of grey. So roll that out on a thin setting and add that too. Also like to apologise for the decrease in quality here. My good phone that I usually use uh, ran out of battery <laughs> five seconds before I finished. So I had to use my current phone which apparently has a worse camera than the one that I usually use. But I didn't know until I looked at the footage so I apologise for that and I'll try and charge my phone better next time. And that's it guys, we finished the butterfly, fantastic! Thank you guys so much for watching, it means a lot to me that you still do. Uh, I have a Patreon page now which may be of interest to some of you, I do in-depth step-by-step tutorials on there with photos and loads of words, go enjoy it. Uh, and until next time, happy claying!